Father, we are grateful this morning. We give you all the glory and honor. Thank you, Father, for the privilege to know you. You are the Heavenly Father that cares. You are the Heavenly Father that is responsible. You are the Heavenly Father that is concerned about your own. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy that are new every morning. Lord, we worship you today and always. We give you all the glory. We are alive today by your grace. We are alive today because you are faithful. We are alive today because you uphold us with the right hand of your righteousness. This morning, we return all the glory to you alone. Father, be thou exalted in Jesus' name. As we share the word of God by the ministry of the Holy Spirit, I ask that you will give unto us a revelation of the care of the Heavenly Father. That everyone will have a revelation of the care of the Heavenly Father. That everyone will know that the Heavenly Father cares. It will not be what you have been told. It will be what is real to you in your life. In the name of Jesus. Let the word of God come out with power, with accuracy, with grace. Even today. Help us to know the presence of God within us. Help us to know the strength of Jesus within us. Help us, O oh Lord, empower us by your word. Encourage those who are discouraged. And give hope to those who are hopeless. Let the word of God bring strength, bring empowerment in the name of Jesus. We ask that the preaching and the teaching of the word will break yoke this morning. It will bring healing to the sick and it will bring deliverance to those who are oppressed. Online, on ground, open our eyes to see the love of the Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father. We give you praise, we give you glory. Great Holy Spirit, be free among us. Do and say the things that only you can do and say. Glorify Jesus and establish the counsel of the Father. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's be seated. Good morning, everybody. We thank God. It's another opportunity to gather and fellowship together, and fellowship with the Holy Spirit in the presence of the Father. And I believe today will be another time of encounter, that your life will not remain the same in the name of Jesus. The word of life will touch your life. The word of life will give you life in the name of Jesus. Uh, this morning, I want to continue in the teaching I started last week, we began to look at a new series last week. And the general theme of this new series is understanding worry and anxiety. In a bid to understand worry and anxiety, we are trying to master the truth in the command of Jesus against worry and anxiety. We are trying to master the truth in the command of Jesus against worry and anxiety. That's the objective, that we will master the truth in the command of Jesus against worry and anxiety. Last week, I began to talk about the evil of worry and anxiety. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 25 down to 34 we discover that there was a re, there is a recurrent statement that Jesus kept repeating and repeating. Repeating and repeating. And that statement is not a suggestion. That statement is a command. A command of Jesus to the end of the evil of worry and anxiety. 
that command is warning us about the evil of worry and anxiety. And you see that command in verse 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Again, in verse 27, you will see that statement again. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? In verse 28, and why take ye thought for raiment concerning the lilies of the field? Consider, rather, the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, and neither do they spin. Now, verse 31, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? And verse 34, it said, Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So you see, Jesus kept repeating it. And that repetition was intentional. It was not an empty tautology. It was intentional because he was trying to warn us against the evil of worry and anxiety. And that none of us should travel that road. Anyone who is traveling that road does not understand the Heavenly Father. Maybe because he is not even aware that there is an heavenly father or he does not have a revelation of his care, of his love, of his provision. He does not know that the heavenly father is there. When nobody is there, he is there. When nobody can help, he will help. If he made you, he will care for you. If he created you, he will sustain you. That is the care of the Heavenly Father. And the Heavenly Father is a responsible Father. Now, incidentally, today is Father's Day. <laughs> Praise God. I'm going to pray for all the fathers before we go. Those that are rendering the ministry of a father, either biologically or spiritually or destiny-wise, Whatever, you are a father figure, whatever, I'm going to pray for you before we go. To be a father is not a, is not a bed of roses. Are you hearing me now? It's easy to be a spam sharer. Just sleep with women and get them pregnant and then off you go. That's very easy. That's a very easy job. But to be a father is to take responsibility. Are you hearing me now? And I'm praying for you that one of the things that will happen to you today is that more than ever before, you will have the revelation of the Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you will have the revelation of the Heavenly Father. His care and His love. As I understand the Heavenly Father, it gives me an understanding of my role as a father. Either biological or spiritual, or destiny, or whatever. It gives me the role, my responsibility as a father. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And I'm praying that you, it does not only give me my responsibility as a father, it, it solidified my faith that I cannot be stranded. Just as I don't want my children to be stranded, the Heavenly Father will not want me to be stranded. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Just like I cannot eat when my children have not eaten. Just like I find it disgusting to my reputation to see that that is his child that is walking naked in the street, no food. That is his child that is sent away for school fees. That is his child that there is nothing to eat. That is his wife that is having problems there and there. Just like I feel embarrassed to have that. The Heavenly Father is embarrassed. 
when, when I feel there is no hope. Are you hearing me now? Your heavenly father is embarrassed when you feel that there is no hope. It is the devil that makes you believe that. When you conclude there is no hope for you, as a child of God, you are listening to the wrong voice. The devil is showing you something wrong. Are you hearing me now? No authentic father that knows what it means to be a father will ever find it funny when things are not taken care of in his family. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You know, during the week, something happened. I showed my master's thesis to my daughter. And uh, I, she was going through it. And I knew in the acknowledgement her name is not there. So I wanted to explain to her as a father why her name was not there. I wrote that thesis 24 years ago. And I told her, I said, you were not born that time. So I can't possibly put your name there because you were not even the picture. It was only a person I have heard that was born that time. You were not born. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I said, but I thank God that it is not that you were going through my library and you saw my master's disease and then only to discover that I've passed on. I said, I thank God for keeping me alive. I said, this is a daughter that was not born. Then now you are a graduate. You are a barista at law. Now, that, that's God, God has been faithful over the years. May you go home today with that revelation. I can't hear your amen. May you go home today with that revelation. The revelation of the faithfulness of the Father. He has your yesterday covered. He has your today covered. He has your tomorrow covered. No one of us knows tomorrow. But the Father in heaven knows tomorrow. He doesn't know tomorrow alone. He has gone ahead to make provisions. Stop that worry. That's what Jesus is saying. If you know that there is a heavenly father that is for you, that loves you, that you are his responsibility, you will find it foolish to, to be worried. So Jesus said, take no thought, take no thought, take no thought. He kept repeating it, repeating, don't worry about food, don't worry about clothes, don't worry about, about your body, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about tomorrow because it is already completed in the perfect plan of the creator. I told you last week that worry and anxiety are unnecessary. Worry and anxiety are unreasonable. Worry and anxiety are unwise. Worry and anxiety makes you become godless and faithless and a gentile. To be a gentile is a reduction. It's a demotion. You are a believer. Somebody say, I'm a believer. I am not a Gentile. Don't let worry and anxiety reduce you to the level of a Gentile. It is a demotion. You know, the general message of Jesus Christ is simple. Worry and anxiety are evil. And they are to be avoided. Now, today, what I want to do briefly is this question. Why is worry and anxiety evil? Why? Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I just said? Why is worry and anxiety evil? It, the message is not complete. If I just tell you, worry and anxiety is evil. Worry and anxiety are evil. Now that is what Jesus said. And that's the truth. That's what Jesus said. But the question is why? Why is worry and anxiety evil? That's just what I want to do today. Now, there are many compelling reasons substantiating the evil nature of worry and anxiety. That's the first thing I want you to know. There are many compelling reasons substantiating the evil nature of worry and anxiety. And these reasons are from the spiritual perspectives. They are from the physical perspective. They are from the mental perspective. They are from the emotional perspective. They are from the social perspectives. That's the second thing I want you to know. What does that mean? It means 
spiritually, worry and anxiety are evil. Physically, worry and anxiety are evil. Mentally, worry and anxiety are evil. Emotionally, worry and anxiety are evil. Socially, worry and anxiety are evil. Because most people believe that it's only evil because Jesus said so. It is evil on every ground. It is evil in every realm. Spiritually, it is evil. Socially, it is evil. Mentally, it is evil. Medically, it is evil. Emotionally, it is evil. In all spheres of life, worry and anxiety are evil. And that is the justification for Jesus' command against worry and anxiety. Because Jesus knows it's evil on every ground. So he said, take no thought. Don't worry. Don't be anxious. Don't go through that road. There will be challenges of life. There will be problems of life. But don't look at, there is no solution in worry. There is no solution in anxiety. That's what Jesus is saying. Don't consider worry and anxiety an option to solve your problem. The devil will suggest it as an option. But it's not an option. It's not necessary. It's not wise. It will reduce you to the status of a Gentile. So on every ground that you want to talk about, worry and anxiety are evil. And that is why there is justification for the command of Jesus against worry and anxiety. Now, before I go this morning, I'll give you seven reasons. How many reasons? Seven reasons to substantiate the, the evil nature of worry and anxiety. Why you should not travel that road? I know there will be challenges of life. And some of us are facing that challenge now. Individually, there are challenges. Family-wise, there are challenges. And this challenge differs from one family to the other. As a nation, our nation is facing challenges. The world is also facing challenges. There is nobody you are going to ask at one point or the other that doesn't have a challenge is facing. Life is about challenges. Face the challenge, overcome the challenge. But... Worry and anxiety is never an option to solving a challenge, to overcoming a challenge. Don't travel that road. It is tempting. It is tempting. It is always tempting. In fact, it is the ready thing to do whenever there is a problem. Whenever there is an issue that you can't understand, the ready thing to do is to worry about it. The ready thing to do is to be anxious about it. But Jesus is saying, don't do it. Why? Because it is evil. And I will give you seven reasons. Number one, worry and anxiety are the foundations of tormenting fear. Worry and anxiety are the foundations of tormenting fear. That's the first reason why it is evil. Worry and anxiety are the foundation of tormenting fear. Once you get to the road of worry and you begin to become anxious, you will simply become a victim of a tormenting fear. The Bible says fear has torment. How many of you remember that? Fear has what? Has torment. Fear is not a good thing. It grips you and torments you. Fear is a weapon of the devil to reduce you to nothing and to destroy your faith in God. And those who have ever been a victim of fear can tell you the torment in fear. It will take the delivering power of God to rescue men from the torment of fear. And worry and anxiety are the foundation of that fear. Everywhere you see worry and anxiety, you are looking at the foundation of fear. I've seen people that are given to fear. I discover that it is worry and anxiety that open the door. Did you get what I'm saying now? 
I have seen people in my pastoral experience, my relationship and things like that, that are too fearful. They are the people that open the door by worry and by anxiety. The paralyzing power of fear is generated by the foundation of worry and anxiety. When worry and anxiety take over, panic will set in. Did you hear what I just said? The moment you allow worry and anxiety to take over, panic will set in. You know, when you begin to panic, you will lose your reason. You will lose your sense of reason. You will do things that look crazy because you are no longer mentally coordinated because the panic is tormenting. It is worry and anxiety that open the door. Worry and anxiety are the invitations for fear. And they are the invitations for all the negative consequences of fear. Once you start to worry, once you start to be anxious about anything, you are inviting fear. You are inviting every negative consequences of fear. Isn't that evil? That's why worry and anxiety are what? Are evil. You must not go through that road. Don't let the devil deceive you to go through the road. Let me say this, brethren. Whatever worry and anxiety begin, fear will complete it. Whatever worry and anxiety starts, fear will finish it. That is why the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, for you as a believer, he said, God has not given unto us the spirit of fear, but he has given unto us the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and of a what? Sound mind. Now, if God didn't give us the spirit of fear, then it is the devil that gave that spirit. And if worry and anxiety are foundations of a tormenting fear, then worry and anxiety belongs to the devil. You can't be traveling the road of the devil and experience the power of God. You can't expose yourself to the operations of Satan and be a beneficiary of the operations of the Holy Ghost. Let this word come into your spirit more than the word of your pastor. That may be the saving grace for some of us. That may be the reason why your lifetime will be extended. That will deliver you from the, from the fear of death. What fear do you have? It is because you open the door for worry and anxiety. You are never afraid of anything you never worry about. Did you hear what I just said now? You are never afraid of anything you are never anxious of. Once you start to worry about tomorrow, you are, you'll be afraid of tomorrow. And all the negative consequences of fear will begin to grip you. And the evil, the, 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 the most, the, the terrible thing is that when you are afraid of tomorrow, the quality of your life today will begin to go down. Begin to go down. Begin to go down. You will not enjoy today because you are afraid of tomorrow. You will not enjoy today because you are afraid of tomorrow. You will begin to regret yesterday because you are afraid of tomorrow. Are you hearing me now? In fact, many of us, you will not even know, the, you will not even believe that God has forgiven you about the mistake of yesterday because you are afraid of tomorrow. Whatever you are afraid of is what you have worried about. Whatever you are afraid of is what you have been anxious about. Stop the worry. Stop the anxiety. You will defeat the fear. Did you hear what I just said? Say after me, stop the worry. Stop the anxiety. You will defeat the fear. No believer should contemplate victory over fear without dealing decisively with the twin evil of worry and anxiety. You can't have it. No, even though, no, no matter the prophet that lay hands on you and say, be free from fear. 
You cannot be free from fear until you decisively deal with the twin evil of worry and anxiety. I care less in the care of God. You know, I care less in the care of God. The meaning is this. I don't have any reason to be afraid or to be anxious because God is there. God is caring for me. What about you? You know, when the, when, when the praise worship was going on, and uh, I, I see the song was about the father, the father. How many of you remember that? How many of you? How many of you noticed that? The song was just about the father, the father, the father. I say, Holy Ghost, thank you. He has come to show us the revelation of the heavenly father. Tell somebody I have a father. He is king of kings and lord of lords. I have a father, almighty father. He is king of kings and lord of lords. I have a father. What about you? I have a father, almighty father. He is king of kings and lord of lords. I have a Sing it one more time. I have a father, a almighty father. He is king of kings and lord of lords. I have a father. Number two. Why is worry and anxiety evil? Worry and anxiety are time and life wasting evils. They are time and life wasting evil. If you begin to worry and you begin to get anxious about anything, you will be wasting your life and wasting your time. Nothing wastes life and time more than worry and anxiety. Because time will be going and worry and anxiety will not achieve anything. Except to destroy you internally, outwardly, physically, spiritually, mentally. That's all it does. It is a life and time wasting evil. Both worry and anxiety. Say after me, worry and anxiety are life and time wasting evil. They do not facilitate any positive turnaround. They do not yield any benefit. As a matter of fact, worry and anxiety make people brood over what may never happen. Worry and anxiety will make you brood over what may never happen. One woman called me sometime and she was in serious panic. Ah, 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 daddy, daddy. I said, what is it? She was panting on the phone. She said she's afraid. She said, I said, what is it? And she said she's feeling some, something in her breast. And, and then she felt, and then she was, immediately the Holy Ghost told me that she thought it was cancer. Because she was afraid. That fear gripped her. And, and I said, and I will pray for you now. Because the Holy Ghost told me it's nothing. It's not what she's thinking. It's just the normal process of menopause and things like that. But I know that she needs more assurance than that prayer. I said, well, you, you can go for a test. But God told me it's not what you are thinking about. Ah, she said, yes, sir. And I prayed. And then she went for a test. And then when the result came out, they said there was nothing like that. Are you hearing me now? Now, if she didn't go for that test, she won't believe. How many of you know? You know, the devil will continue to say, ah, is there, is there, is there, is there, is there. And, and as long as she stays under that, life will no longer be enjoyable. Are you hearing me now? Now, before you know it, she will be opening the gate for that thing that the devil is trying to bring. 
When the devil wants to plant something into your life, he brings it in form of a suggestion. And as long as you continue to accommodate that suggestion, you are opening the door for the devil to plant it. Your worry is the permission the devil needed to plant that evil. Your anxiety is the permission the devil needed to plant that thing. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Worry and anxiety will make you brood over what may never happen. Only God knows how many times we have brooded over what, did, what will never happen. And what will never even occur. They waste life and time by amplifying false expectations. Worry and anxiety will amplify false expectations. Worry and anxiety will project unrealistic assumptions. It will project unrealistic assumptions. It will project unsubstantiated evidences. Worry and anxiety. You feel pain in any part of your body, it tells you that's cancer. And then you get worried about it. 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 What is not even real, worry and anxiety will get you to worry over it. Unsubstantiated evidences. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Worry and anxiety are not only unreasonable, they are also an unproductive way of spending your time. If you are under the influence of worry, you will never achieve anything good. Are you hearing me now? It is an unproductive way of spending your time. It is an unproductive way of living your life. Worry and anxiety. Worry and anxiety. You are not going to achieve anything. If you worry, you are not going to start that building. If you keep worrying, you are not going to start that building. You are not going to start that building. If you keep worrying, you are not going to continue with that building. You are never going to even believe that what you have started, that you will finish it. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Worry and anxiety, they are the most unproductive way of spending your time and living your life. That is why they are evil. Are you hearing me now? Now, when I hear from the Lord to move, I don't want to care what will happen again. I just take that step of faith. Is somebody hearing me now? I take that step of faith. I tell my wife most of the time, I said, God said we should move on this matter. We may not have all the resources required. What, what about what, what, when we get to this junction? How are we going to do it? How are we going to do it? Now I'm not going to accommodate that thinking. God said we should move. And as we keep on moving, God always meets us on the road. Did you hear what I say now? If you are looking for the weather, you will never do anything. Because the weather may, is very, very unreliable. It may show as if the rain is going to fall. And then you are worried, rain will fall. I'm not going to go out. And then you relax. You are not, the, the places you should go, you don't want to go again. After some time, the cloud will be clear again. And then as you want to step out again, the cloud becomes dull again. <laughs> Before you know it, you can waste a whole day. Am I correct? And that's how it is. That's how life it is. Once there is a clearance from heaven, just move ahead. And believe God. And believe God. Are you hearing me now? Those people that couldn't build a house when they were selling cement, 1,000 1, naira, 500 naira. God can build a house for them now that they are selling it 8,000, 9,000. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? But if you begin to think about how much will it cost? How will it, how will this, how will this? You wouldn't take any step. You won't take any step. Worry and anxiety are the, 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 the way to live an unproductive life. If you don't want your life to be productive, just continue to worry. Just continue to be anxious. It holds your life on the same spot. It does not allow you to move. It demobilizes you. It is the most unproductive way of spending your time and living your life. Number three. Why is worry and anxiety evil? Worry and anxiety 
create unnecessary despair and depression. Worry and anxiety create unnecessary despair and depression. If you allow worry and anxiety, your hope will die. Hope is one of the energy for life. Are you with me? Hope is one of the reasons for life. If you have hope, you will find reasons to live. When the devil has taken the hope of people away, they conclude that the next thing to go and do is to kill himself. Have you seen people that concluded that it is death? That they are going to die? How many of you have, have, you have seen people like that? You have heard of people like that? That they just concluded that nothing is going to work again? Why am I, in fact, some people will say, why am I living? Why, why am I living? When people begin to talk like that, their hope has been murdered. Once there is still hope, you will still be finding reasons to live. No matter how tough life is, no matter how difficult life is, no matter how unsure life appears, once you still have hope, you will still have reason to live. When people are sick, the moment they throw away hope, their body will fastly go down. Their immune system will collapse. Every other th somebody that you think is already coming out, coming out, coming out, coming out, things. Once he throw away hope, every other thing will just come down. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Because hope is a defense. A defense. A defense against the spirit of death. It's a defense against the spirit of death. Once you keep, once you have hope, once you have not lost your hope, hope in God, Hope in the word of God. Hope in life. You will have reasons to stay alive and hang on. No matter the problem you are facing. After all, there are people facing greater problems that didn't die. Yes or no? Some of the people that concluded that it is suicide that they are going to go for. Some of the things they are facing is lesser than what other people are facing. And they didn't die. But somebody, before they see one problem, he said, next thing is, is to go and die. It is because the hope has been taken out. And one thing that destroys your hope is worry and what? And anxiety. I'm praying for you. Another man will not enjoy the fruit of your labor. You will be alive, healthy. You won't take your fruit of labor in the hospital. You will be alive, healthy. To enjoy that fruit of labor. Hold on to your hope. Tell somebody, hold up to your hope. The Bible says we have a hope as an anchor of the soul. We have a hope as an anchor of the soul. A hope that keeps our soul steady. It keeps our mind steady. It doesn't allow the drifting of our mind. People that are thinking unnecessary thoughts are opening the door for the destruction of their hope. And once your hope is destroyed, the little thing you are facing, you will want to die. Whereas some other people that are facing more grievous things are still moving on, are still pushing on, are still pushing on, are still pushing on, are still pushing on. Was it last week I mentioned Pastor Nick? Pastor Nick. Now, how many of you have heard of him before? And I know some of you have seen the picture of Pastor Nick. You have seen him, they just put him on the table like this. He's a full-grown man, no? but he has no limbs. He doesn't have any limbs. But he's, he continues to minister. Today he's married. He has four children. Four beautiful children. Are you hearing me now? What can be worse in life? That somebody was born with a terrible condition that makes him have no hand, no leg. Did, can you imagine somebody that has no hand and no leg? He just like that, just, just like that. They just carry him like that. Today, he still looks like a baby. Even as a full-fledged grown man. It is when you see his beard that you will know that this is a full-fledged grown man. 
He preaches from nation to nation. Preaches the gospel. If you see the audience that come to hear him, and if you listen to his word, you will know that this is a man that is worth hearing. May you conquer your worry. May you conquer your anxiety. Worry and anxiety wants to destroy what you are capable of becoming tomorrow. Today he has his wife, he has children. I mean, what, is, what, what, is, what, are, what are people doing that he cannot do? It's not a liability. Okay? It's not, he, he brushes himself, he takes care of himself, he dresses for himself, he operates computer, he, do, he does his work on the laptop. Okay? There is this little, like, that looks like a toe that comes out of it. That is the one he's using for everything. I have seen people that have no hand and leg. I mean, they have no hand, but only leg that they have, that they are cooking themselves. Are you, what, is, what has happened to you that has not happened to somebody before? But when you are gripped by worry and anxiety, the devil will make you believe that your case is the worst. Is the worst. And then he will conclude, go and die. He will say, there is no tomorrow. That's worry. He will tell you, there is no tomorrow. Go and die. This problem, go and die. You are the only one. In the, you know, I used to pastor a woman. She is always moody, always unhappy, especially when she comes to church. Her face has never brightened up. And one day I called her. I said, I, I think you need deliverance because your face is always stony. What is wrong with you? He said, Daddy, you cannot understand. I said, That is the deception of the devil. The devil has told that that nobody can understand your problem. When people get into that hole, that eh, kol, yenisa, kol, eh, milo monti monla, kodja, is the devil that is trying to isolate you, to assault you. What are you passing through that somebody else has not passed through before? Can, I, can, can you hear me now? What is somebody passing through that somebody else has not passed through before? It is the deception of the devil. To tell you that hey, nobody can understand what I'm going through. What are you going through that somebody has not gone through before? And if we have somebody that has gone through it before and they have overcome, that is the hope that you also can overcome. But when you open your door to worry and anxiety, it makes you believe that there is no way. The only way is to go and die. The only way is to get yourself into depression. We are living in a time in our country that many people are under the bondage of depression. People are depressed. Don't be in that group. Worry and anxiety paint pictures of discouragement. It paints pictures of hopelessness by making situations seem worse than they really are. Worry and anxiety will frivolously exaggerate challenges. By making challenges look insurmountable. I'm still explaining that's number three. Oh. Worry and anxiety will destroy your creativity. Now, they say tomato is very expensive. Are you hearing me now? If you don't worry, if you are not anxious, you will know that there are some other things that can take the place of tomato successfully. Yes or no? I remember when we... My, my, my mother used to plant some, this long tomato. They would plant it. And, you know, when the soup that they cook by that one is always thicker and very sweet, even more than the regular tomato. Whatever tells you there is no way out is the devil. Did you hear me now? There is a way out. Come on, tell somebody there is a way out. Say there is a way out. There will always be way with God. The God that we serve is the God of ways and the God of means. That is a way out. That is a way out. Don't let anybody tell you there is no way out. That the next thing is, the only way is for you to go and die. Is for you to think, 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 think and, and, and submit yourself to depression. Worry and anxiety will destroy your creativity. It will destroy your, your strategic thinking. Because they will project an impossible situation. Worry and anxiety undermine the power of faith. They undermine the power of faith by promoting helplessness and doubt in the power of God. 
Worry and anxiety activate unnecessary surrender to faith and defeat. It activate. Have you heard when people say, I, 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 I surrender to my faith? Have you heard people talk like that? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That is worry and anxiety. They activate unnecessary surrender to faith. F-A-T-E. F-A-T-E. Not faith. Though, not F-A-I-T-H-O. F-A-T-E. They will say, that is my faith. That is my... Oh, yes, that can be a problem. But it doesn't make it my faith. I will overcome. Tell somebody, I will overcome. My test today will be my testimony tomorrow. My mess today will be my miracle tomorrow. Jesus died on Friday, so to say. On the third day, he rose up. That is telling you that there is no condition that God can transform. As long as you are alive, there is hope. I tell you there is hope. I tell you there is hope. I tell you there is hope. Don't surrender to faith. Don't surrender to defeat. Don't conclude and say, well, it is over. Don't say that. Don't say that. Tell somebody, don't say that. Number four. Why is worry and anxiety evil? Worry and anxiety make the load of the present hour excessive and unbearable. Worry and anxiety make the load of the present hour excessive and unbearable. <laughs> Amen. Have you seen people, they walk, walk up and down in their room, walk up and down in their room, walk up and down in their room, and after all the work, they say, <sighs> how many of you have seen people like that? When your chest begins to rise, when your chest begins to rise, how many of you have felt like that before? Your chest is beginning to rise. And then your breathing is beginning to cease. You are dying, you know. That's what worry and anxiety does. <sighs> and then your chest is beginning. It's like there is a body in your heart. That anytime you remember, it cuts you so deep in your heart. And your head will swell and you start to cry. And you begin to pity yourself. Begin to, you know, you know, your head will begin to swell. And then you begin to cry. And then your heart is caught in, inside. And then your chest is rising. And you are almost gasping for breath. Huh? The devil is, 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 a, is, is, is interested in killing you. You must not allow him. Are you hearing me now? I tell people regularly, I say, relax. What did I say? Relax. When people come to talk and say, ah, did daddy, this is that, did that, they talk with my say, relax, relax. Relax. God is in control. <laughs> Tell somebody, relax. <laughs> yeah, you didn't say it well. <laughs> say it again, relax. <laughs> you must relax. Because God is in control. Do you remember say, okun oki, horuru? Eh? When it about doing for are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. What is not enough today will be more than enough tomorrow. What you lack today, you will give it away tomorrow. So why are you why are you troubled? You know, you have enough load for the present hour. Don't let worry and anxiety add to it. Worry and anxiety make the load of the present hour excessive and unbearable. There are three seasons in the life of a man. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You know what worry and anxiety, what it does? It will bring the pain of yesterday and borrow the pain and borrow the burden of tomorrow and add it to the concern of today. 
Look up, everybody. Worry and anxiety will bring the pain of yesterday and borrow the burden of tomorrow and add it to the concern of today. There is pain yesterday. There is burden for tomorrow. There are concerns today. Worry and anxiety will bring the pain of yesterday and borrow the burden of tomorrow and join it with the concern of today. That is why the load will be excessive and unbearable. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Only teba teba mo eruti mo ngbe talogbe ru le elori. Only eruti mo ni kongbe ah eruti mo ni kongbe she wa lo ngbe abi Jesus lo ngbe Jesus ni ajaga mi rono eru mi shekini ufu ye is God <laughs> praise God. How many load can you carry? I'm asking you. How many load can you carry? So why, you, why do you carry that load? Let God carry it for you. The Bible says, casting all your cares upon him. For he what? He careth for you. How many of you believe that? Eh? If you don't cast your cares, you won't, you won't know how much of care God can give you. Praise God. So that's what worry and anxiety does. Worry and anxiety bring people under the yoke of all kinds of stress. And it, they overwhelmingly complicate lives of people with wild thoughts and depressing feelings and imaginations. They complicate your life with wild thoughts and depressing feelings and imaginations. So, your, the load is so unbearable and excessive. And you will be feeling the weight of life. And if not careful, you will begin to crash under that weight. Are you hearing me now? Number five. Worry and anxiety are evil because they make believers live like a hopeless orphan. Worry and anxiety make believers live like a hopeless orphan. Orphans are people that have no father, no mother. But worry and anxiety will even complicate the situation to make you live like a hopeless orphan. There are some orphans that still have hope. But worry and anxiety will make you become a hopeless orphan. Why? Because they kill the, your focus on the Heavenly Father. They kill your focus. What your anxiety kill your focus on the Heavenly Father? Some of us keep, moving, we keep focusing on men. Hello? Stop that from today. Stop focusing on men. Did you hear me now? Oh, did you hear me now? Stop focusing on men. Start focusing on God. Some of you that have a good job or a good business, you are focusing on that business. That business is not your source. Stop focusing on that business. Do your business very well, but don't focus on it as the source of your life. There is no future in that business. If you believe that is the source of your life, businesses collapse. Time and season changes. Don't trust anything you can see. Some of us have responsible fathers and mothers. So you believe there is nothing you need that they will not give. Thank God for your father and mother. But stop focusing on them. Start focusing on God. Those father and mother will not be there all the time. Is somebody hearing me now? And the earlier you start to focus on God, the better for you. Stop focusing on anything you can see. Stop focusing. Stop fo there is no amount you have in the bank. It can finish. It can, fin it can be wiped out. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It can be wiped out. You know, a few days ago, myself and my wife were discussing. And we were talking about the futility of anything physical and anything material. 
It doesn't matter how many houses you have. It doesn't matter how many land you have. It doesn't matter how, many, how much you have in the bank. We thank God for those things, but don't focus on them. Don't let them be your focus. And then I was, I, and I mentioned somebody that we knew before in Nigeria, and the whole world knew him. Today, there is nothing to attach to his wealth. Nothing. All his businesses collapse. He has many businesses. Has, he, has, he has a paper. He has a newspaper. He has different businesses. In fact, there was a time he was the richest man in Africa. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There was a time he said that all the money that he is spending in philanthropy are like rain is falling. And then the ones that he's pouring down, he said that's the one he's spending. He has not even started spending all this money. But today, today, there is no single company linked to him that is still working. Stop putting your hope in things you can see. If you can see it, don't rely on it. Did you hear me now? We thank God for things. We thank God for cars. We thank God for houses. We thank God for everything that we may have. Thank God for a good job. Thank God for a responsible parent. Thank God, thank God, thank God, but never focus on them. Let God be your focus. I hope somebody is hearing that. Hello? Worry and anxiety will kill your focus on the Heavenly Father. It will make you respond to life issues like an ordinary human being. You will be totally oblivious of the reality of the promises of God's help and provision. Worry and anxiety will deny you the strategic benefit of the God factor. When everything fails, there is the God factor. Tell somebody, there is the God factor. Come on, say, there is the God factor. When the days there is no way, nothing, no way again, there is that God factor. There is that God factor. God can turn things around. But worry and anxiety will make you to be totally disconnected from that God factor. And it will separate you from the satisfying experience of his involvement and intervention. Number six. Why is worry and anxiety evil? Are we still together? Worry and anxiety are about the biggest problem facing mankind. That's why they are evil. They are about the biggest problem facing mankind. No wonder Jesus said, don't worry. Don't be anxious. Once you stop yourself from worrying and anxiety, you have dealt with the biggest problem of life. And the reason is because we don't know tomorrow. That's why we worry about them. We don't know tomorrow. That's why we get anxious about tomorrow. Whatever human brain cannot comprehend, they worry about it. They keep worrying and keep worrying and keep worrying themselves. Whatever we can calculate, we keep worrying about. Worry and anxiety are about the biggest problem facing mankind. Can I tell you, beloved? Worry and anxiety are the foundation of many health problems. And many emotional stress. I can mention some diseases for you. Stomach ulcer is fundamentally through worry and anxiety. Heart diseases. Heart diseases, most of the time, are from worry and anxiety. High blood pressure, 80% of the time, is because of worry and anxiety. You are 25 years old, and, they are already, and you are you're already being treated for high blood pressure. You must, you must rise against that devil. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. Depression. That's a medical condition too. Insomnia. People can't sleep. Stay awake from, from, from evening till morning. I've known people that even if you give them value on 1,000, they won't sleep. Their eyes will be open like that. It is a chronic 
it is a chronic effect of worry and anxiety. Whatever makes the eyes to be open without feeling sleepy has damaged every part of the system. Hello, somebody. When the body is okay, when it is time to sleep, the eyes will close. How many of you understand that? Even if you are trying to open the eye, you are trying to open the eye. When you are okay, when it is time to sleep, you will just sleep. So they say, oh, no, 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 Praise God. Oh, no, 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 Praise God. So, insomnia, rheumatism, most of the time is worry and anxiety. One of the things they do is they compromise your immune system. That's worry and anxiety will compromise your immune system. And then they promote general weakness. I'm praying that the Holy Ghost will get up to a point where you will personally hate worry and anxiety. Can somebody say amen to that? I pray again that the Holy Ghost will get us to a point where you will naturally hate worry and anxiety. You will never consider them as an option. As from today. Finally, worry and anxiety facilitate complete destruction of mankind. Complete destruction of mankind. Worry and anxiety is the devil's the devil's um, readiness to completely destroy you. Whenever worry and anxiety is setting in, the devil has concluded to completely destroy you. Worry and anxiety are not natural things. They are spiritual things. So don't take it natural. They are not normal. Oh, no, normal. Can you worry? Can you shine? Can you worry? Can you shine? Can you normal? Can you normal? Once you get in the road of water and anxiety, the devil has concluded to destroy you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Complete destruction. What did I say? They completely destroy. They completely destroy. How? Write down these six things. By stealing your joy. When the devil wants to completely destroy you, the first thing he does is to steal your joy. He steal your joy. That's the road to complete destruction. By stealing your joy. People that are full of worry and anxiety are always joyless. They are always joyless. They have no joy. They, have, they are always moody. They are always sad. They are never excited. Always moody. No joy at all. By disturbing your peace. That's worry and anxiety. When worry and anxiety want to completely destroy you, it will begin to disturb your peace. Those that are full of worry and anxiety have no peace. They have no peace at all. They are never at rest. They are never at peace. Are you with me? Number three, by blurring your vision. By blurring, that's what worry and anxiety does. When it wants to destroy you completely, it will blur your vision blur your vision. If you have a vision of a tomorrow, you will have reasons to live. Am I correct? Hello, am I correct? If you have vision for tomorrow, ah, tomorrow, this is my vision for tomorrow, this is my vision for tomorrow, this is my vision for tomorrow. that vision will keep you alive, will keep you alive. You will have reasons to stay alive. But you know what worry and anxiety does? It blur your vision. It blur that vision. You lose faith in that vision. Number next, by robbing you of faith and focus. By robbing you of faith and focus. Those that are given to worry and anxiety, they never have faith. They are never focused on God. They are never focused. They are always, they are always toast up and down. Up and down. No focus. No focus. Look at my hand. Say, no focus. Somebody say, focus. Say, focus. There is no, when you see a light that is not focused, that's a life that is about to be completely destroyed by worry and anxiety. They rob you of your faith. They rob you of your focus. They weaken and paralyze you. That is worry and anxiety. They weaken and paralyze you. They weaken and paralyze you. 
You know, some people will use the condition of Nigeria as a reason why they will not do anything. Don't join that group. Did you hear what I'm saying now? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Don't let it weaken you. Don't let it paralyze you. Don't let the devil discourage you by worry and anxiety. When the devil wants to destroy somebody completely by worry and anxiety, worry and anxiety will render them inactive and ineffective. That, that anyone who gives in to worry and anxiety is ready, is ready for complete destruction. Beloved, as I round up today, let me tell you that you have a heavenly father who cares. Say after me, I have a heavenly father who cares. Say it again, I have a heavenly father who cares. Say it louder, I have a heavenly father who cares. You must have that understanding. You ha it is not consolatory, it is the truth. It's not just consolatory that ah, uh, okay, no, I saw, I saw two, and you know, that's not the truth. That is the truth. The truth is that you have a heavenly father who cares. He is a compassionate father who is rich in mercy. He is a trustworthy father. He is a faithful father who has promised and provided all things. That is why Jesus Christ kept saying. Take no thought. Take no thought. Don't worry. Don't be anxious about what is already provided. Don't worry. Don't be anxious about what is already available in God. I'm praying that you will have a fresh revelation of the care of the Heavenly Father. May you have a fresh revelation of the love of the Heavenly Father. Because that is the only thing that will deliver you from the evils of worry and anxiety. As you begin to take no thought, you will begin to live a better life. You know, when the choristers were ministering to us, they say, very much within me is what? Is the presence of the Lord. Very much within me is the strength of Jesus. That is a better tomorrow. When you know, when you have a revelation of the care and the love of your heavenly father, you will begin to live a better life. Somebody say, better life for me. Come on, say, better life for me. You know, we have a government sometimes that say, better life for rural women. <laughs> Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? Human beings can't give better life. Um, especially wicked people. Selfish people ungodly people can never give better life. There is nothing better in the hand of the devil. When you look at any better life, God is as his root. You didn't hear what I just said now. Did you hear what I just said now? Human beings, don't, they don't want you to be okay. But there are people that will always love you when you are in need. And you will think they are very loving people. When you are looking for soup to eat, but they will give you. You say, ah, so and so is very, ah, very loving. When you have no money, they give you. They show their love when they, you are in need. Because that boosts their ego. Bah! It makes them feel big. But when you don't need their help again, they get frustrated. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. They get frustrated. Isn't it funny? Isn't it funny? Is it not that time they should be happy for you? At least you don't bother them again. You don't need them again. But they, they, they don't like it. And then they say, Otobe, no. Otobe. Otobe, koma. Otobe, koma, shikbiragasiwa. And things like that. Anything you say that time is pride to them. Because they actually wanted you to need them for life. They don't want anything. You didn't hear what I say. You don't know a friend until a friend can handle your success. You don't know a friend. You don't know a friend. Don't 
Real friends are happy with you for your success. In fact, they take your success as if it is their own. Those are real friends. Those are real friends. Those are real friends. Friend. When, when things begin to change, that's when you will see the nature of people. That's when you see the color of people. When you are no longer in a rented apartment, when you now move into your own house, that's when you will see the color of people. Anyone that cannot handle your joy is your enemy. You didn't hear what I just said. Now. You know, <laughs> somebody was getting married and another person, now another person locked herself up in the pantry and said it's not going to come out. And they say they said they should go and beg her. I should come out. My by your journey, you have to say, I 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 have to she will always hear me say, Um, mm, Baba, I found him a woman. Mulala, Lunjebe. When she says that, I know she wants to collect money. He <laughs> says, Ah, Baba, oh, Baba, oh, found him a woman. I know, I'm going to pay you. Mulala, Lunjebe. You didn't hear what I say. It is God that can give better life. Better life is coming for you. I can't hear your amen. Better life is coming for you. As you trust him, as you shun the path of worry and anxiety, you begin to live a happier life. Happier life is coming for you. You begin to live a healthier life. Your health will improve. You begin to live a richer life. Your life will be richer. Are you blessed this morning? Let's rise up on our feet. I pray today that it will not just be a message that you hear. It will be a revelation that you have. My tomorrow is wonderful. My tomorrow is glorious. I have every reason to stay alive. Because my heavenly father cares. My heavenly father cares. My heavenly father cares. The only person that can leave me and I will shake is, is God. I don't want God to leave me. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The only person that can leave me and I will shake is God. There is no human being that leaves me that I will shake. Because no human being can be God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Trust him from today. Because of the evil of worry and anxiety, let that be enough reasons why you will never travel that road. I will sing this song three more times and then I will leave you to begin to pray. I have a father, almighty father, he is king of kings and lord of Lord. I have a father, hallelujah. That's the one I want you to see. That's the one you must see today. The heavenly father, the one who cares. He is king of kings. The Lord of Lord, I have a father. Hallelujah, I have a father. Oh, Almighty Father, He is King of King and Lord of Lord. I have a father. I want you to go before the Lord and begin to tell the Father, never again will I doubt you. Never again will I get into worry. Never again will I get into anxiety about anything, about my life, about what to eat, about what to drink, about what to wear, about tomorrow. I trust your care. I rely on your love. You are my father. The one who can give me better life. Oh, the one who loves me. Never again will I doubt you. Your provision will satisfy me. 
Your plan for my life will satisfy me. I will not question your plan. Your timing will satisfy me. Open your mouth and begin to pray. I will not question your timing. I will not question your plan. I will not question your purpose for my life. The heavenly father cares. The heavenly father loves. I receive a fresh revelation of your care. Daily revelation. Daily revelation. Daily revelation. Daily revelation of the care of the father. I will never be a victim of worry and anxiety. I break that yoke. Today, I break the yoke of worry. I break the yoke of anxiety. When we leave this place, it's very good now that we are together. But when you are alone, worry and anxiety want to come again. Break that yoke. May you always remember this teaching. May you always remember this teaching. I break the yoke of depression. I break the yoke of discouragement. I break the yoke of hopelessness. I will not kill myself. I will not die. I will live and declare the works of the Lord. My tomorrow is better. My tomorrow is greater. I trust God for a better tomorrow. I trust God. Open your mouth and begin to pray. I'm not going to be hopeless. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give myself to a pity party. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pity myself. I, I trust the Father, the Heavenly Father that cares, the God that has gone ahead of me, the El Shaddai, the all breasty God, the all breasty one, the all breasty one, only Buore, I trust you, my Father. You have gone ahead for me to the future. You have gone to the future for me. Your plans are okay for me. Your plans are okay. I'm satisfied with your plan. I'm, I'm okay with your timing. Oh, yes, Lord. I am satisfied. No, 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 no agitation. No agitation. No worry. No anxiety. I rely upon you. I rest upon your unchanging grace. Let's talk to the Lord this afternoon.